AS Computer Science Chapter 3 Hardware Part 2 Output Devices and Embedded Systems. We start from the inkjet printer, and the inkjet printer is an example of an output device. Okay, so we did in the last session, we did the touch screen. The touch screen, if we talk about the touch screen, the touch screen is an input device. Okay. However, if we talk about the screen itself, it's an output device. The laser mouse is an input device. And before this, we did storage devices. And you must be able to describe the principles of operation of such devices. Okay? So the inkjet printer is a printer in the first place that prints output on paper. Okay? However, the inkjet printer, as its name, implies work by works by spraying e droplets of ink. So the inkjet printer works by spraying droplets of ink onto a sheet of paper. Okay, you have several motors. We call them stepper motors. You have a stepper motor to feed the paper sheet in. You also have a stepper motor to move the print cartridge left and right across the paper. So this is the print cartridge, and this is a belt carrying the ink cartridge. And these are stepper motors that move the print head left and right. There is also another stepper motor that, that feeds in the sheet, the sheet of paper. Okay, so the printer drive, there is also a printer driver. The printer driver that is part of the operating system or the system software, the printer driver translates data into a suitable format for the printer. The printer receives data from the computer and stores data in the printer buffer, a kind of memory inside of the printer. The paper feed stepper motor, so there is a paper feed stepper motor, is activated and a sheet of paper is fed from the paper tray. The print head, this is the print head, moves across the page and ink is sprayed each time the print head poses for a fraction of time. So a droplet of ink drops every time it poses. Paper feed stepper motor and advances the paper a fraction of a centimeter after each completed head pose. So, so this is a description of how the printer, the inkjet printer works. A, a stepper motor feeds the, the empty page. Another stepper motor moves a print head across the page, and then it pauses a millisecond and sprays a droplet of ink and then keeps moving. And then also every time the Bring the inkjet head completes a move from left to right or right to left. The paper is moved, advanced one step. Okay, let us talk more about the inkjet print head. The print head contains a large number of very small nozzles. Ink is fed from each nozzle from a reservoir. So you have a reservoir of ink, and that you may have like three or four different ink colors, okay? And the head is mixing these colors with special uh, percentages to describe, to define every possible color. The print head fires droplets of ink onto the paper. The print head moves horizontally across the paper. Let us go to the nozzle itself. There are two types of nozzle. One of them is called thermal bubble nozzle, 
and the other is piezoelectric nozzle. The thermal bubble receives this diagram may represent both kind of nozzles. Thermal bubble or piezoelectric. It receives a pulse from the computer and then it creates a localized heat in the ink. The ink expands or vaporizes and then collapse and drops on the, on the paper. So the thermal bubble works by heating the ink, forcing it to drop on the paper. The piezoelectric nozzle works by vibrating the nozzle and also allowing the droplet of ink to fall onto the piece of paper. So the thermal bubble, tiny resistors create heat inside each nozzle. The heat vaporizes the heat vaporizes the ink to create to create a bubble. When the bubble pops, the ink is disposed is deposited onto the paper. The collapsing bubble creates a particular vacuum in the nozzle. Ink is drawn from the reservoir, ready for printing the next dot. So every droplet creates a dot on the paper. Or let us be more precise, every droplet creates a pixel on the paper because it's an image. So this is how thermal bubble works. The piezoelectric, a little bit different technology. You have to study both. There is a piezo crystal. That what is that piezo crystal? It's something that vibrates when it receives a signal from the computer. So there is a piezo crystal at the back of the ink reservoir for each nozzle. The crystal vibrates when it receives a tiny electric charge. Ink is forced out of the nozzle by inward vibration. The outward vibration creates a partial vacuum in the nozzle. Replacement ink is pulled into the reservoir. So when it vibrates, that piezoelectric thing, when it vibrates, it sucks an ink from the reservoir and pushes the droplet of ink onto the piece of paper. When it vibrates, creates a vacuum that sucks a piece, a, 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 a little amount of ink from the reservoir and then pushes that ink as a droplet onto the sheet of paper. You also have stepper motors that two, two or three stepper motors, one of them for feeding the sheet of paper, the other is for moving the print head left and right. The print head stepper motor is connected to the printer head by a belt to move the print head across the paper. The feed paper stepper motor turn the roller that provide the paper feed and move the paper in small increments. Use of ink jet printer used to print photographs. When you have a colorful picture on your camera and you like to print it, you would rather use an ink jet printer. This is all what we have about the ink jet printer. Next, we have the laser printer. The laser printer principles of operation differ, and you have to study both. The laser printer works with powder ink, not liquid ink. The laser printer definitely uses a laser beam. The laser beam, so this is the laser beam. And this is a mirror. And the laser beam draws the image on a photo, photo receptor drum. This is a drum, photosensitive drum. The laser beam draws the picture to be printed on that drum. That drum rotates. During rotation, it touches the toner. During rotation, it touches the toner. The toner is the printing powder. We call it toner. Okay? So the laser beam draws the image on the drum. 
the drum rotates and touches the toner reservoir, okay? And then part to be printed will be filled by ink. So the laser beam draws the image on the drum. The drum rotates, touches the toner. It is filled with ink and then keeps rotating. And then it touches the piece, the piece of paper. Here is the paper tray and here is the paper. And the ink, the powder, now sticks to the paper. And all this is done using electrostatic charges, positive and negative electrostatic charges. You know that opposite charges attract. So positive attracts to negative. Okay? So again, you draw, you draw the picture using laser on the drum. The drum rotates. The drum is filled with powder. And then the drum rotates. The powder leaves the drum and sticks to the paper. So now the picture is on the paper. However, however, when the paper exits, exits the printer, it goes to a heater. It goes through a heating roller that makes the powder permanently sticking, that makes the powder permanently stick onto the paper. That's why the laser printer, papers coming out of the laser printer are a little bit hot because there is a heater, we call it fuser, that fuses the powder onto the paper so that it becomes permanent. Otherwise, it is only sticking by positive and negative charges, and this is not so permanent. Okay? This is the principle of operation of the laser printer, and you need to understand it. Okay? So the drum, this is the drum. Let us read what is written here. The drum is given an electric charge. The drum starts to revolve step by step. At each step, a laser beam is directed by the mirror. This is the mirror and lens assembly to a sequence of position across the width of the drum. At each position, the laser is either switched on or off. So it's data, ones and zeros. Okay. To leave the charge on the drum or switch it on to discharge the position. The process repeats until a full page image has been created. So you draw the image on the drum. The drum is coated with a charged toner. When it rotates, the drum is coated with the toner. And toner is the, the printing powder. Okay? And it sticks to position where the drum has been discharged. The drum rolls over, which, okay? A sheet of paper is discharged and passed through the heated roller to fuse the toner. Okay, so as I explained, the laser beam draws the image on the drum. The drum is coated with ink and it rotates. Ink stick to the paper. However, it is not so permanent. It goes through a heater fuser to make the ink permanent on the paper. Okay, so the internal operation of a laser printer, this is a repetition of what I have said. However, it is just copied from a mark scheme. This is the same thing repeated. The drum, the revolving drum is initially giving an electric charge. A laser beam bounces off moving mirror. So you may have some other bits of information from this. Please study my explanation and also please study that answer that came from the mark scheme. They should exactly be identical. However, maybe the wording or so. So just read it again. I don't have time to go through them again. Okay, just understand how it works and then explain it in your own words. The use of ROM in the printer. We have ROM. ROM stores the instructions for the printer. 
store the printer operating system. The, 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 the printer itself is a computer system. However, we will call it an embedded system. Later on, we need to teach the embedded system. So this Arab stores the boot up or startup instructions of the printer. Store fonts. So the printer deals with fonts. You know what a font is. Okay. Use of RAM in the printer. Stores currently running parts of the printing software. Store the data being printed. We have a buffer that stores the data to be printed. And that buffer is stored in the RAM. Now you should know what is meant by RAM and what is meant by ROM. Stores the current progress of printers. Store data about the printer, for example, toner lab. Okay. This is what I have to say about the laser print. Okay. Next, we talk about 3D printers. 3D printers create solid objects. Rather than using ink to draw the layer, the 3D printer uses a nozzle to squirt material on the print bed to create a physical layer to match the design. So this is a 3D printer. It has a nozzle, and that nozzle could be thermal bubble, bubble or piezoelectric, somehow similar to the inkjet printer. However, instead of using liquid ink, it uses resin material, okay, that create a physical layer to match the design. This process is repeated for successive layers. So it creates the design layer by layer. The process is repeated. When the whole object has been formed, it, is, it has to be cured. It, it, the, the object has to go, for example, into an oven to warm it a little bit so it solidifies and becomes a totally finished product. To ensure layers are welded together and the material has been converted to the form required for the finished product. So what you can study from this is that the 3D printer creates a product, a physical device. Okay, let us talk about the microphone and the loudspeakers. Let us talk about the microphone and the loudspeakers. And as you can see, they are both together. The microphone is for sound input. The loudspeaker is for sound output. That's why we have them both here. Both of them require a, a conversion. The microphone requires a conversion from analog to digital. The loudspeaker requires a converter that converts digital data from the computer into analog data that plays on the speaker or human ear can hear. This is typically done using the sound card in the computer. So the microphone takes your voice and your voice is in the form of waves like this. We call this analog signal. The computer is all digital, is all ones and zeros. So you have an analog to digital converter at input. Okay, on the other side, you need to change. So the, the sound wave is like this in the microphone, is converted to that form, ones and zeros inside the computer by the analog to digital converter. Here you have the opposite digital to analog converter that converts it into electrical waves like this that goes through go through the sound the loudspeaker to produce sound like this okay microphone for input of sound 
a microphone is needed. This is a device that has a diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. A flexible material which is caused to vibrate by incoming sound. If the diaphragm is connected to a suitable circuit, the vibration can cause a change in the electrical signal. So vibration in the pr air pressure becomes vibration as an electrical signal. A condenser microphone uses capacitance change as the mechanism. An alternative is to use piezoelectric crystal. What is that piezoelectric thing? Piezoelectric thing is about electricity converted to vibration, vibration converted to electricity, and this will work with the microphone very well. You have vibration that is converted into electricity. The, the incoming sound wave, the, the microphone has a diaphragm. The incoming sound wave causes vibration, causing a coil to move past a magnet or change the capacitance. Okay. The electrical signal has to convert it to digital by an analog to digital converter. I hope this is so clear. Please study it very well. And then we told about the analog to digital converter and the digital to analog converter. Loudspeaker has to do the opposite thing. The loudspeaker needs to receive a varying electrical signal and changes that varying or vibrating electrical signal into vibrations in the air, pressure vibrations in the air. So to do that, it has a magnet, a permanent magnet, and a coil. And you know, when vibrating electricity goes through the coil, it creates a vibrating magnetic field. That vibrating magnetic field interacts with that permanent magnet, you know, attraction and repulsion, attracts and repels. So it vibrates, causing that diaphragm to vibrate putting that vibration in the air in the form of sound waves human ear can hear. So you have a voice coil. That coil carries the varying electrical signal and creating an alternating magnetic field. That alternating magnetic field interacts with the permanent magnet, pushing and pulling the diaphragm, causing the diaphragm to vibrate. The vibration of the diaphragm is the voice, is the sound that causes the air to vibrate and the sound travels through the air to our ears. Okay, so this is the principle of operation of the loudspeaker. The current flow through a coil suspended within the magnetic field provided by a permanent magnet. As the direction of current keeps reversing, the coil moves backward and forward. The movement controls the movement of a diaphragm, which causes the sound to be created. Okay. So components of the loudspeaker, you have a diagram, coil, voice coil of wire, suspension, and a permanent magnet. And that was an answer to a question in the past paper. Please study it. Internal operation of the loudspeaker takes an electrical signal and translates it into physical vibration to create sound wave. The electric current in the coil creates an electromagnet field. Go through it because I have plenty of things to teach today. Okay. Next, we have <coughs> a virtual headset. A virtual headset, you put it on your head in front of your eyes. So probably there will be two screens in front of your two eyes creating what is called stereo vision. When you look at things,
from two different angles, you, th you see it three-dimensional, like reality. That is called virtual reality headset. Okay? A virtual reality. A virtual reality headset is a head-mounted device that provides virtual reality for the wearer. The VR headsets are widely used with video games, but also used in simulation and trainer. They comprise a stereo head-mounted display. Stereo means two. So with stereo sound, you have two speakers because you have two ears. Okay? Separ two separating images for, for each separate eye to create the illusion of three-dimensional environments. Also, that thing. Okay? That, that thing that I cannot read is that for about uh, measuring the position of the head. Maybe... Uh, uh, the, uh, the tilt of your head. Okay? It's about the, the, the earth gravity. Measuring the earth gravity. Magnetometers. Accelerometers. They are so, in brief, you have so many sensors in that virtual headset to sense your head movement. Some VR headsets also have eye tracking sensor. So it looks that the, it is seeing where your eyes are looking at. There are two eye pieces. These are fed pair of images to be able to see three dimensional environment. Okay, so that was a bit about uh, remaining output, input and output devices in the chapter. Next, we have to study embedded system. And the embedded system is such an important topic that we have to study very carefully.